You need to know your enemy. From where have demonic beings come? The scripture has the answer. Before I begin, make sure you're subscribed to Encounter TV on YouTube and make sure that you click that notification bell. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. When it comes to the origin of demonic beings, it's important to remember that this particular topic isn't central. It's not a primary tenet of the faith. So it's not necessary to understand this in order to be saved, but it is worth exploring, which is why we're going to dig into it now. And we're going to look at the scripture and we're going to stay within the safety net. We're going to stay within the safe boundaries of scripture and we're not going to go and veer off into speculation, but rather we're going to look at the verses. We're going to look at the scriptures and see if we can find any clues as to the origin of demonic beings. Now, in Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14, Angels are referred to as ministering spirits, but I want to contrast this truth with something found in Acts chapter 23. Let's look at verse 29. So there was a great uproar. Some of the teachers of religious law who were Pharisees jumped up and began to argue forcefully. We see nothing wrong with him, they shouted. Perhaps a spirit or an angel spoke to him. Now, angels are technically spirits. But there's a big enough difference between angelic beings and spirits that a thin line of distinction was drawn in Acts chapter 23, verse 9. So they're of the same nature, but with some distinctions. So nowhere in the scripture do we see it directly or clearly or specifically stated that demons are fallen angels. So from where has that belief originated? Well, it's found in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, at least the basis for that belief. Revelation chapter 12, verse 9, this great dragon, the ancient serpent called the devil or Satan, the one deceiving the whole world, was thrown down to the earth with his angels. So there we see it, right? I mean, this dragon was thrown down. He took his angels with him. So aren't those fallen angels demonic beings? Well, there are some distinctions to be found in scripture between demonic beings and angelic beings. Number one, demons need bodies. If you'll notice in scripture, demons seek to possess physical bodies. And there's a reason for that. In fact, in Matthew chapter eight, it seems that the demonic beings were rather uncomfortable outside of a physical body. Matthew 8, 30 to 31. There happened to be a large herd of pigs feeding in the distance. So the demons begged, if you cast us out, send us into that herd of pigs. So demonic beings crave physical bodies. They desire physical bodies. They're like parasites. Fallen angels, on the other hand, have physical bodies. Genesis chapter 6, verse 4. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. Now, this term sons of God in the Old Testament is always a reference to supernatural beings. It's not until the New Testament that this term sons of God comes to refer to human beings who are converted. So this verse here is talking about angelic beings who came down and procreated with the daughters of men. So they have physical bodies. Now, some would say, well, doesn't it say in Matthew chapter 22, verse 30, that angels neither marry nor are given in marriage? Well, yes, the scripture says in Matthew 22, 30, for when the dead rise, they will neither marry nor be given in marriage. In this respect, they will be like the angels in heaven. But that's only to do with marriage. It doesn't say anything about whether or not angelic beings have physical bodies. In fact, angels can walk among us unnoticed, which means they have physical bodies. Hebrews 13, 2 says, Don't forget to show hospitality to strangers, for some who have done this have entertained angels without realizing it. The angels at Christ's tomb were confused for human beings. Luke 24, 4 says, as they stood there puzzled, two men suddenly appeared to them clothed in dazzling robes. So here we see in the scripture that demonic beings crave physical bodies and angels already have physical bodies. All angels in scripture have physical bodies, including the fallen angels. Demons, by contrast, desire physical bodies. As I said, demonic beings are parasites. 
So let's take a look at distinction number two. Demons wander the earth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 says, When the unclean spirit is gone out of a man, he walketh through dry places seeking rest and findeth none. So demons wander the earth when they're driven out of their host. Angels, by contrast, even the fallen ones, can go from heaven to earth at will. In Job chapter 1, verse 6, the Bible says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So there are a few good reasons to believe that fallen angels were among those who came to give an account to God in Job chapter 1, verse 6. First of all, the devil was no longer Lucifer. He was called Satan. Secondly, we see that the devil is in his fallen state in this particular verse because John 10.10 10 says the thief's purpose is to steal and kill and destroy. And of course, that's what he wanted to do to Job. Thirdly, this account in Job takes place after the flood. Job 22.15-16 through 16 says, Hast thou marked the old way which wicked men have trodden, which were cut down out of time? whose foundation was overthrown with a flood. So this is after the worldwide flood. So Satan was already in his fallen state. So it's safe to conclude that among those angelic beings presenting themselves to God were fallen angels as well. So demons are forced to wander the earth when they're driven out of their host. Angelic beings, including the fallen ones, can go from heaven to earth. It seems at will, but at least we know that they can do it. Now, distinction number three. Demons are called devils or unclean spirits, whereas angels in the New Testament, including the fallen angels, are still called angels, but with a negative description attached to that term. When referring to fallen angels, New Testament scriptures do not use the terms demons, devils, or unclean spirits. Instead, the Bible makes reference to fallen angels simply by using a negative description or a negative context. For example, these verses clearly describe fallen angels. 2 Peter 2, 4, For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. Jude 1, 6, And the angels which kept not their first estate. There's the negative description but left their own habitation. He hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day of the great judgment. Matthew 25, 41, Then shall he say also unto them on the left hand, Depart from me, ye cursed, into everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. It has to go out of its way to describe his angels. In other words, the fallen angels. Why not just use the term devil or unclean spirits? Because they're distinct from one another. Now, when referring to holy angels, Paul says in Galatians 1 verse 8, an angel from heaven. Although if we or an angel from heaven preach any other gospel to you than the one we have preached to you, let him be a curse. In other words, Paul is saying there, even if one of the good angels preaches to you a different gospel, don't believe it. So we see these three distinctions very clearly laid out in Scripture. Distinction number one, demons need bodies. Angels do not. Demons wander the earth. Angels can go from heaven and earth. They can travel in between the two worlds. And distinction number three, demons are called devils and unclean spirits. Fallen angels are not. So if demons are not fallen angels, what are they and from where have they come? Well, let's go to Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, which is a key verse, by the way. There were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. Now it's at this point that I have to explain that fallen angels committed two different sins and thus resulted in two different punishments, or they received two different punishments. First of all, we see that the fallen angels rebelled against God along with Satan. We can see reference to that in Revelation chapter 12, verse 9. And for this sin, they were punished by being sent to the earth. In other words, they lost their heavenly place. The second sin we see is the fallen angels procreating with women. And this was punished, as we see in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 4, by them being sent into darkness, and they're chained in darkness. So is this a contradiction? No, this is not a contradiction, 
because the two different sins resulted in two different punishments. We see this again. We'll read the full verse, 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God spared not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. So here we see that second sin being punished. Remember, when Satan was cast out of heaven, they were sent to the earth, not to hell. So it was that second sin that caused the fallen angels to be punished a second time in that they were sent to this place where they're chained in darkness. Jude chapter 1 verse 6 also refers to this when it says, And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the day of great judgment. So this was a major sin that was committed. And you notice that it was the procreation that resulted in the existence of giants or men of renown. So these men of renown, these ancient powerful beings that you read of, were actually the offspring of fallen angels and rebellious women. We know, again, that the sons of God, that term, refers to angelic beings. And if it was actually referring to humans, that would not explain why giants were born as a result of the procreation. So why did the fallen angels do this? Well, remember, when the Lord cursed Satan and when the Lord punished Adam and Eve, he also gave a prophetic word. The people knew that coming through the seed of the woman was redemption and salvation. They knew, the fallen angels knew, Satan knew, that if Jesus was born, if that seed was born, that that would be their ultimate defeat. So what did they try to do? They tried to pollute the generations. They tried to pollute the DNA by procreating with the women. And this was a wicked sin indeed. Think about this, that their sin resulted in a half-man, half-angel creature. What an abomination indeed. This was the mixing of DNA. Genesis chapter 6, verses 5 through 7 gives us the full picture. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So here we see that God was so grieved by this sin that that's when he decided to flood the earth. In other words, he had to preserve the purity of human DNA. Not that it was necessarily perfect, but he wasn't going to send the Messiah through the offspring of man and fallen angel. That just wasn't something he was going to do. So here we see what happened. The fallen angels coming to procreate with the daughters of men, giving birth to these giants referred to as the Nephilim. And these giants became the men of renown, worshipped in the ancient world as gods. Perhaps you've heard of them in the history books or referred to in the religious books of ancient people. And now we see a picture beginning to form. Now, when someone who is godly dies, where do they go? Of course, they go to heaven. The redeemed go to heaven when they're, when they're passing from this world to the next. But where do the ungodly go? Well, they go, of course, we know, to everlasting punishment, a place called hell. But when a half-man, half-angel is killed, where does that being's soul go? It remains upon the earth as an unclean spirit. And so we see that demonic beings are the offspring of these strange hybrid creatures whose bodies were destroyed in the flood. And now they seek bodies of their own. They are parasites. That's why you speak down to them like that. Well, when you're walking in the power of the Holy Spirit, you can speak to them with authority. Why? Because they're parasites. They're seeking hosts. They're seeking people to, to give themselves strength. Well, think about it in Mark 5. The demon-possessed man was given great strength. Why? Because he was possessed with these beings who had great strength themselves. Now, 
The reason I showed you the different punishments, the banishment to earth and the being chained in darkness, was because I wanted to point out the fact that demonic beings aren't the ones who are chained in darkness. Those are the fallen angels. In fact, fallen angels are usually referred to in the future tense or in the past tense, which kind of clues us into the idea that the work of fallen angels is not as active in our day. This doesn't mean fallen angels don't exist. They could be the wickedness in high places referred to in Ephesians chapter 6. But we do see that fallen angels, for the most part, are chained in darkness. In fact, in Revelation 9, we see one being called Apollyon. He's the king of a swarm of locusts. He's unleashed upon the world. But this doesn't mean Satan isn't at large. It's possible some of the fallen angels didn't participate with that second sin and therefore are still upon the earth. But I believe that Satan primarily does his work, not necessarily through fallen angels, though some may be unchained because they didn't participate in that procreation. But I believe that primarily we're battling against these demonic beings, these parasites. And that's why it's important that we understand who we're dealing with. You see, remember when the archangel wouldn't dare to bring an accusation against the enemy? Yes, there was some reverence there because he was a very powerful being, still is a very powerful being. But we're not dealing with fallen angels. We're dealing with the parasites, their offspring, whose bodies were destroyed in the flood. And so when casting demons out of people, it's a simple exercise of authority. No gimmicks, no tricks, no superstitious rituals. It's just an exercising of authority that comes when you're filled with the Holy Spirit and living right. So as believers, we are to exercise that authority over these parasites and tell them to let people go to release people so that they're no longer hosts for these demonic beings but so that they become filled with the holy spirit and redeemed so father we thank you i pray lord that you would help us to be more mindful of the spirit realm lord i thank you that we've been given authority over these parasites these demonic beings help us lord first of all to stay grounded in your word for your word is truth. And Lord, give us the authority, give us the power to drive out demonic beings that people might be set free. Use us, Lord. Say that to him. Say, use me, Lord. In the name of Jesus, we pray. I want you to say it because you believe it. Say, amen. I have a question for you. Do you think knowing the origins of demons is important for the believer? Why or why not? Tell me about it in the comment section right now. Now, I'm about to read your responses to a previous video, but first I want to read a scripture to you. Proverbs chapter 11, verse 24. We'll actually read verse 25 too. Give freely and become more wealthy. Be stingy and lose everything. The generous will prosper. Those who refresh others will themselves be refreshed. When you live generously, God prospers you. That's the biblical truth. I want to challenge you to give generously toward this work by giving a one-time gift or becoming a monthly ministry supporter. You can give a one-time gift by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash donate. You can become a monthly ministry partner by going to davidhernandezministries.com slash partner. Your support helps to fund the media, the live streams, the events, the Holy Spirit School, and so much more. So support the gospel, get behind this ministry, and let's continue to tell the world the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit through events and media. And now I'll read your comments from a previous video titled, This is Why Satan Hates You, The Fall of Satan Explained. What an intense title. The question I asked in that video was, In what area of your life do you need to reclaim dominion? Mithia de Vera wrote, I need to reclaim my thoughts because as you have taught, thoughts turn into a way of living. Therefore, I need to take back the dominion God has given me and allow the Holy Spirit to have my mind. Destin Bliss wrote, I need dominion over my words and to tame my tongue. Thanks, Pastor, and may God bless you with more wisdom from his word. Juan Caballero wrote, I am finally finishing this battle of lust that caused me to lose my peace, and these videos are helping me. I thank God for fighting my battles. 
And the final comment I'll read from this video comes from Jesus is King who wrote, My answer to your question is that I need to reclaim my thoughts. I want my thoughts to be pure, good, and according to the will of God. Well, one more time, don't forget to subscribe to Encounter TV on YouTube and click that notification bell. You can also follow us wherever you're watching us. And until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. Don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Also, help us spread the gospel of Jesus Christ in the power of the Holy Spirit. Make a one-time donation or become a monthly supporter by clicking on the donate link now.